film something. Hey friends, welcome. It's Jeff Heath coming at you. And today we are talking about slow motion. That's right. As you can tell with my very creative and effective acting skills that I was not in slow motion. <laughs> I know, totally crazy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me here. Today we are talking about slow motion cameras and I was lent the wonderful, beautiful, fantastic Kronos 2.1 HD slow motion camera from the wonderful people over at Kronos made right here in Canada. Oh, Canada. Now there's lots of videos out there on using this camera for studio where I think it really shines. I even did a little studio shoot myself just to test it out. And it is hotter than a hot thing on a hot day in this room because I have a million lights set up because today we are doing slow motion with this wonderful camera which shoots up to a thousand frames per second in HD, but if you don't know anything about slow motion, the slower your motion is, the more light you need. So I literally have every light I have in my studio pumped onto this little stage I've got here right now, and I'm recording some wonderful things. I know, pretty cool, right? Slow motion reels falling into water, ooh, perfect. But what I wanted to use it for was for outdoor video stuff to check out how wildlife interacts in slow motion. So I was let this camera in late December. Unfortunately, the one thing that was kind of difficult was a lot of the animals I wanted to film happened to be away or hibernating or you know, just not present at the time, but I was able to utilize it for a few different shoots with some winter storms and some birds and some eagles and different things. So for those of you that don't know what a slow motion camera is, I had, I posted a video on TikTok where someone said, slow motion is just slowing down the video. All you gotta do is just like make it slower. Frame rates have nothing to do with how a camera looks. There's lots of people on YouTube using 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. Listen, I appreciate the comment. Thank you for commenting on the video. However, frame rates have a huge thing to do with slow motion. The higher your frame rate, the slower the motion is because you have to imagine back in the day when they used to use film in camera, you would have 24 pictures in one second of footage. Frames per second has everything to do with slow motion. So if you're shooting 24 frames per second, you have 24 pictures per second. The more pictures you can fit inside of a second of footage, the slower your motion's going to be. Slow motion, it's picking up 100, 120, 500, or on this camera, 1,000 frames per second in HD, which is crazy. Now, you might say, Jeff, there are other cameras out there that do this. Yes, there are other cameras out there that do this, however, not at the price point of the Kronos. The Kronos starts at just $6,000 for a high speed camera, which is unheard of. That's crazy, the Phantom camera starts in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, plus you need to have it connected to a computer, and you need to have external monitors and all this other stuff that you need. I'm not a structure place of the Phantom, I haven't looked into it for a while. I'm sure it's in the millions and trillions of dollars. So why is this camera special? It's because it comes in at 10, under $10,000, shoots a thousand frames per second in HD. It shoots cinema DNG, which is insane. You have mounts, which you can switch out. They gave me an EF mount that I could switch out onto my camera, all EF mount lenses, which was great. For my purposes, I didn't shoot in cinema DNG because you need an external recorder to record that footage. They sent me an SD card, which fits right inside the camera, and it has an internal battery as well. So. My purpose is for borrowing this camera is to test this out to see how I could utilize this and use this in some of the outdoor stuff that I do because a lot of the stuff I do is for tourism brands, fishing brands, uh, just outdoor stuff with wildlife. And I think it would be really sweet to see wildlife specifically interacting in slow motion at a thousand frames per second. Here are some things I loved about the camera. First of all, 
It has an internal battery. It comes with a Nikon battery that you can stick right inside of it. So the one thing that's awesome about that is a lot of cameras that run high speed have to be plugged into a wall, plus have an external monitor, plus have a computer that it's going into to run it. It's all done on the touch screen internally on the camera. It's got a touch screen LCD on the back, plus a little dial wheel, which is awesome if you want more of a tactile feel. The camera comes with everything that you'd want to shoot outside. It comes with uh, a peaking, it comes with zebras, uh, it comes with focus assist, all these kind of things to help you see in that bright daylight outside, which I found super helpful. The one tough thing with it is that because of the way a high-speed camera works, it's like a computer processing or rendering out a video on your computer. It needs a lot of processing power in order to do it. The one cool thing about it is you can press record and it's continuously buffering out on its internal RAM, I'm assuming, guys, maybe you can correct me, but uh, on its internal processor that it's always buffering and it's always recording. So you can be shooting a eagle or a bird or a whale or whatever you're shooting outside and have the camera recording the whole time. So, and then when the action happens, as soon as that action's over, you can press the record button and stop the recording, but it's been recording that whole time. So rather than having press record when the action happens, which a lot of times you miss the action by the time it's already happened and it's really frustrating in wildlife stuff. You can always be recording and focusing on your subject, waiting for the moment to happen. And it's buffering, buffering, buffering. And then you press record again to stop the recording once the action has stopped and you've captured that image onto the camera. The one difficult thing about this is because that camera is always buffering or rendering out all the time, uh, it wastes the battery very quickly. So on their website, they say the battery runs about an hour. I'm guessing that's just having it on but when you're actually having the record and it's buffering, I was averaging about a half hour of usage because the other hard part with this camera is that it does take a little while to boot up. Like it takes like, you know, a minute or two before the camera turns on. So you wanna have it on, especially if you're filming things outside because you, don't, you won't have time to turn it on and re-record things because of how long it takes to turn on. So I had it on about a half hour to maybe 40 minutes of use depending on how I was using the buffering but still pretty sweet. Those Nikon batteries are available aftermarket or Nikon, so you could buy a few of them if you're shooting them outside uh, and just like <laughs> The cool thing about this camera is uh, if you sit on HD 1920 by 1080 uh, and then you press max frame rate, it's gonna put the max frame rate that it could shoot at 1000.01 something frames per second, which is pretty neat. But if you had uh, some applications that you can use this for as well is for other things where people are using science experiments or just seeing things and just want to see how things react. If you stop down that resolution, you know, to 720 or even lower, that max frame rate will jump up because, you know, you're using less, less resolution processing power, all that kinds of stuff. I don't know how it works. It's magic to me, but still pretty fun if you're, especially if you want to just see things in slow motion, it's going to be in lower resolution, but still pretty sweet. There's lots of other YouTubers out there that have done videos on this camera. I didn't want to get into all the nitty gritty specifics about, you know, this setting or that setting and all those kinds of things because there's lots of videos out there about this camera already. For my specific application, I want to see what this camera can do outside. So here's the things that I loved. I loved being able to capture a moment that would happen like that. You know, one second of a bird taking off last 10 to 15 to, you know, a minute long depending on how you're recording it, especially birds taking off to see their wings and those things in movement is pretty incredible to see at a thousand frames per second. I was able to use it on the west coast here of Vancouver Island to capture some waves in slow motion. And again, just seeing waves and water and those kinds of things like splashing and moving is, it, this camera really shines in those kinds of moments. The more movement you can have in slow motion, the better this camera is utilized outdoors. Now, who is this camera for? Well, I would say specifically, most case uses of this camera will be for indoor product photography, where you have splashes or water or flames or cooking and all those kinds of things. Places where you can control your light, control the camera, control your triggers, all those kinds of things. However, I do think that this camera would have some really sweet applications in the outdoor space, specifically for things that like move very quickly and happen very fast. Uh, I talked with the guys about grabbing the camera again for the summer uh, when there's whales here and bears. 
uh, and maybe some wolves and stuff like that. I just think it'd be really neat to see, you know, a bear fishing for salmon in a moving river in slow motion, I think would be incredible. Can you imagine a humpback whale jumping out of the ocean or breaching? Hopefully, uh, we ch I chatted with the guys over at Kronos. They said, you know, there's potential. We'll see. Fingers crossed, guys, that we can borrow the camera again this summer just to run some more tests. So they have three different models, an 8, a 16, and a 32 gigabyte. I'm assuming that's the RAM inside the camera. Essentially, this gives you the amount of record time that you can use on the camera. So it's 2.7 seconds in the 8 gig, 5.5 uh, seconds in the 16, and uh, 11 seconds in the 32 gig. 11 seconds of recording at 1,000 frames per second, 11 times 1,000, you know, come on. We know that's a lot of seconds of footage, which is pretty incredible. Anyways, just want to say a huge shout out to Kronos. Thank you so much for lending me this camera for uh, the amount of time that I had it, which is awesome. I wish I could have done a little bit more. Looking forward to hopefully using the camera again this summer when, you know, the bears return, the salmon run happens, and the whales are here so we can see a little bit more of that action out here on the West Coast and in the wilderness using that camera in some pretty cool settings, I think, out here on the West Coast. Love this camera. If you are interested in learning more about it, uh, their link is down below here, a link to their website to see all the camera specs. There's lots, again, just Google or YouTube them. Once again, my name is Jeff Heath and... Subscribe and... I'm gonna make some more videos. And if you don't subscribe, I'm gonna tell you. Um, so I didn't mean to say I'm gonna tell you. I just meant I'm not gonna make any more videos.